Hi guys. Well, I have been getting this request a lot to make this video. So, I'm going to make it now. <laughs> so now I present to you how to make a smooth follow for LEGO Mindstorms EV3. It's going to be very similar to the NXT 2.01. So I recommend you see that first. But I'm still going to explain it now anyway. So you don't exactly have to. But I still really recommend you do see it. So first, you go down here to the orange bar and you get a loop out. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I don't have hypercam for this computer, so the quality is not going to be the best, but it still will be seeable for you, so don't worry about that. So first, you take a loop out, like I suggested. Next, what you do is you go back down there again. You go to the yellow bar, and you get a sensor out. This one. Color sensor, or which is a light sensor. And you place it in the loop. Now make sure you set it to the correct port. You most of the time it's port three, so I recommend stick with that. And for the measure, you go to measure, and then you pick reflected light intensity because we are measuring that right now. We're not comparing it to anything. We're not calibrating it. We are measuring it. That's usually going to be the one you always select. So make sure you select it to that. Next, what you want to do is. Like in our previous one, you go to the map block, you select map, like this one, it'll be right next to the logic and the round one, and you put it right next to it. Now like we did for the 2.01, you set it to divide, you select this to 0, for A, and then for B you make it 20. Now again, we're going to be dividing the light level by 20. I want to explain why we're doing that right after. So now what you want to do is you take this and you drag it to the zero. So you should have this so far. So what we've done so far is we have a loop. We have a light sensor. We told the robot to take the light level and divide it by 20 like we did for 2.01. And now we're going to be making, we're going to tell the robot what to do after. So again, you're going to take a switch out. You're going to switch it to tab view. So that's how you do it. You see here? Let me just zoom in a bit. You just click that to switch it from flat to tab view. Flat view. So you should have it. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is right. Like this. Next, what you want to do is select this and what I want you to do is select numeric. Hang on, zoom out a bit. So you should have a numeric value. Now the reason why I don't want to, want to have a logic value is the fact that for logic, it's only two cases. And that's the old one, but we want a more advanced one. So we're giving it five cases, like we did for the 2.01. So right now we have two cases, one and zero. At first, I really recommend this for the sake of keeping track. I recommend change it from this one, make zero one, and make this one zero. This is just for the sake of order. So you have zero and then one and now we need to add a couple more so first I'm just gonna make this a little bigger so hang on let me just zoom out a bit it's fine don't worry so if you uh, expand this by selecting this 
then you'll see this add case and you want to add three more cases so one oh hang on that's one case and we're gonna name that two adding another case name that three and then lastly we're gonna add a fourth a fifth one and we'll call that four so like we did for the 2.01 we have five cases and we've lab labeled them from zero to four so you should have zero one two three four now next if you remember the 2.01 what we're going to be doing is we're going to add five cases for each one now let me just explain what we're doing again so we have a loop which says we have to keep doing this we took the light level and then we divided it, divided it by 20. The reason why we divided it by 20 is because the maximum value is 100. So you want to take 100 and divide it by 20. And when you do that, you get 5, which is why we have 5 different cases. So we're going to give the robot 5 different cases to follow through for the life so that, can, so that it can follow it smoothly. Now, if you remember the last video, within each case we had power numbers for each of the motors. But the power power numbers have changed for some reason. So they're going to be a bit different. So let's start back. I'm going back to the first one. So what you do is for the first one. You go back to green, you select the large motor, don't worry it's fine, you're going to have to select two of these, that's one, and I'm just dragging the second one up. Now what you want to do is, you want to make it go on, so you want to make it go on forever, so you select this, and you make them both go for on. Second, you want to make them make change the port numbers for your drive trains for your driving wheels. Most of the time, that's going to be ports B and C. Usually, B is for your left one and C is for your right one. But if that is different, then I recommend make it for whatever your robot is. But most of the time, people usually go with B and C. Now, for the old one, if you remember, the power numbers were 10 and 50. For this one, the first port is going to be 25 and 20. So let's just make that change right now. The power numbers will be in the description. So don't worry if you can't follow it along too much. So I'm just going to zoom in. That's 25 and 20. This would have been so much easier if I had Hypercam. Okay, for the next one, we're doing the same thing again. So I'm just dragging. All right. Two large motors. Remember to select large motor. Even if you don't actually have a large motor, when you select the port number to that, it will work out fine. So just select large motor. The default is port D, but we're gonna make them again port B and C. I'll make them on. I'm just gonna go ahead and put two of these motors for each one and make sure I set them to on. So I'm oh that's right one. So two large motors, make them on and then select B on the left and C on the right. Now if you have it in reverse and C is on your is your left motor and B is your right, then go ahead and make that change. So this will become C, that will become B, or this could be D for that so case in your robot. But again, most of the time it will be B and C. For a third case. gets tedious after a point that's fine last one on okay we have five cases and they're on so let's go back 
The first one, we've already set it to 25 and 20, which is the right one. And we're going to the second one. The power numbers for the second case is 15, 5. Now, if you remember the last one, it was we gave the, the uh, case 0. The first two cases was for when the robot was far right to the line. For this time, we're giving it for when it's far left to the line. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but for some reason, this works out like that. I'm not exactly sure why the power numbers are different, but it seems to work out when I do this, so that's what it is. Now, if you remember, the third one, the run in the middle, is what is what the robot will do when it's right on the line. So you want to make both power numbers the same. Now, before, for the previous one, I had them both be... I think it was 50-50. For this one, we want them both to be 40-40. Remember, you don't want it to go too fast, because if it's so, it'll be more accurate. So, 40 and 40. Next... We select this one, and this time the power numbers are going to be 20 and 25. So this is when it's just a bit to the right of the line. Finally, we have 5 and 15. Which is when it's far right to the line, so I'll follow it. So let me just give a recap of all the power numbers. Again, it's in the description. First one is 25, 20. Second one is 15, 5. Third one is 40 and 40 when it's on the line. Fourth one, or number 3, is 20 and 25. And the last one, which is number 4, is 5 and 15. Now, there's one extra step you have to do for EV3. Now, before the for N2.0, the robot already knew what the default case was, which is what the robot should do when it's straight on the line, which is have both power, which is the third one, in which they will both be the same. In this case, it's case two. For EV3, what you have to do is you have to select the circle, and you have to make it your default case, so the robot knows when it's on the line, it will go straight. This is a really important step that even I missed in the beginning, and that's why your robot may go spinning like that. So make sure you select that dot for case number two, which is the third one, in which both your motors will be going at 40 and 40 for on. Now again, make sure they're both on, because you don't want them going just a bit. And yeah, that should be it. So let's, let's just give a quick overview. We selected a loop. We took the light level, we divide it by 20, because the maximum value was 100. When you divide by 20, you get five cases. And then you had the five cases for when the robot was far to the left, then a bit closer to the left, so it was close to the left, then it was far to the left, then when it was right on the line, then when it was just a bit from the line, and then when it was far from the line. It's a little bit confusing, and I'm not exactly sure why it's like this, but this does work. And again, the power numbers will be in the description, and that's about it. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I really hope this helped a lot of you.